What's up everyone? I hope this video finds you well. So today I wanted to show you how to connect an SQL Lite database to your C Sharp project using Visual Studio. So I'm just going to assume that you don't know much about databases. SQL Lite is a free and open source tool for creating and managing databases. Um, there is SQLite is the light version essentially of MySQL, another very popular database coding language. Um, the only disadvantage really to SQLite is you can't do multi-threading, so you couldn't do like multiple requests at one time and then multiple responses. Um, it's not really a big deal unless you are at a professional level. So if you're just trying to get an introduction to databases and figure out kind of what's going on with these, SQLite is a great place to start. So let's get started here. We'll fire up Visual Studio, and I will be creating a new project from scratch, so just like you. So I'm going to be creating this on the .NET Core, a console app on the .NET Core, so then that way we don't have to worry about uh, a .NET framework number or you know, having the files associated with a particular .NET framework. We can just use the .NET Core. And I'm going to name this SQLite Sample Database. And go ahead and create that. Give that a second to create the project, and here we go. So now we have our SQLite project. Um, so now we need to go ahead and add SQLite to this project. So we can do this really easily through the use of NuGet. NuGet is a package manager which allows us to quickly find APIs and add them to our projects. So as you'll see there's no installed packages yet because this project is brand new. But if you head over to browse you'll find all of the NuGet packages created by anyone and everyone. And there are thousands of these, maybe hundreds of thousands. There's there's a lot of NuGet packages. But we want the SQLite package in particular. And if you scroll down a little bit we want the system Dot data dot SQLite. It was created by the SQLite development team and it has 6.18 million downloads. So this is a very reliable package. So we'll go ahead and click install. And this is just all of the references or other namespaces that this package will use and we'll accept the terms of service. And now if we head over to installed we should see the system.data.sqlite package has been installed to this project. So now we're ready to start coding with our SQLite database uh, package. So we're going to go ahead and reference that namespace that we just added. So system.data.sqlite. And now we want to start writing some functions that we're going to use. So the first function that we want to write is the create connection. So we'll do this by saying static SQLite connection. So it's going to return an SQLite connection and it'll be called create connection. Okay, so we're going to make an SQLite connection object called SQLite con and now we're going to set that connection object equal to create connection. Oh, my bad. You're going to actually make this a new SQLite connection. And this is where we're going to specify the metadata about the connection. So this is where you would specify things like the database name, and the version that we're going to use and if it's a new database or not. So we'll say data source equals 
database.db. So the database for this project will be database.db version equals three new equals true compress equals true. All right. And now we're ready. So this will open the connection. So we do want to try to open this connection. We don't want to just do it. So we can do it with the try and catch blocks. So that way our code won't totally collapse if the, the connection can't be opened. So we'll try it. And if it doesn't end up working, we have a catch. And assuming that everything went right, and just for the simplicity of this video, we will, we'll say return the SQLite connection object. Cool. So now we need to make a create table uh, function. So this one can just be a void, create table, SQLite connection, just name it con. Okay. So now we're going to create a SQLite command object called SQLite command. And within, we're going to create a string, create SQL. And this string is going to be set to the actual command, the SQLite command for creating a table, which is create table. Um, I don't think it's totally necessary, but it is good practice. Like it's heavily used in practice uh, to use all caps, like create table in all caps. Um, for the SQLite commands, you'll notice this as we go through this video. Uh, so we'll, we'll say column one, and then this is where you specify what column one is. So it's varchar and allocating it 20 characters essentially. So this is like the name of the variable and we're allocating 20 characters to name the variable in column one. So next up, we're going to do column two. Column two, and we'll just make this an integer variable. All right, cool. And then now we're ready to create that command. So we're going to say SQLite command equals the connection dot create command. So now we have it ready for like this connection to create a command, right? So we're going to say SQLite command dot command text equals create SQL. And now to execute that command, we say SQLite command dot execute non-query. So now it's just going to execute whatever command is in this command text. Great. So now we're going to uh, make another um, function. It's going to be insert data. So we can create the table, but we don't have a way to put data into the table yet. So that's what this is. this function is for. So it accepts an SQLite connection as an argument and now we're going to specify the SQLite command and SQLite command. So very similar to the create table function, we can just make this equal the connection dot create command. And now we can specify the command. So the SQLite command dot command text will equal insert into. So that's our SQLite command is insert into. And then we'll name the table sample table column one comma column two. So that's saying the data that follows is going to go into column one and column two respectively. So the data that follows now, so we say values, that's our SQLite command, and then quote, single quote, we'll say sample, t 
text and then we'll put a comma and then the integer one and now we're ready to execute this command so we can say sqlite command dot execute non query and that will insert the data into our table great so now we want to also be able to read the data and this will be the final function that we go over in this video so we'll make a static void read data and it will accept an SQLite connection con and we'll make so we're, we're gonna make an SQLite data reader object and the reader will do just that. It'll read the data from the SQLite database. So we'll also need a command to do this. So we're going to make an SQLite command object. And with that command object, we're going to very similar create the create a command with the connection that was passed. And now we can specify the command text and the command text is going to be select so it's going to you know select from the database and then the asterisk the asterisk in sqlite is like saying select all so select everything select all the columns and the rows just pull all the data and then you specify so from and we want it to be from our sample table Okay, so that's going to get all of the data from our sample table, which is just this one entry right now, but that's okay. And now we're going to do, with our SQLite data reader, we're going to say this is equal to the SQLite command dot execute reader. So this returns an SQLite data reader object, so we can set this equal. Hopefully use like a variable oh my bad I used the object or I mean the class I should have used the object which is SQLite reader and then we're gonna say so while the SQLite reader dot read so while it's reading data we're going to say string reader string equals sqlite reader dot get string at the index zero. So just keep on pulling from you know whatever's inside of this reader. We want to get that data into a string, and then we can just write this to the console console dot write line reader string. And we'll go ahead and close our connection here because this will be the end of our program. So now we want to, you know, actually execute the, these functions that we wrote. So we can get rid of this console at right line hello world and say SQLite connection. So we're creating our SQLite connection object connection. And now we can set that equal to create connection, which is the function that we wrote right here. That's going to return our SQLite connection to the database.db. And then we want to just test our other functions. So we'll say create table with SQLite connection. Then we're going to say insert data. SQLite connection and read data with our SQLite connection. So if everything goes according to plan, we should see um, the this this data right here, what was inserted into our table, will be selected from that same table when it's the read function is called, and then we'll output that to console. So let's go ahead and run it, and fingers crossed it works. 
All right, cool. So we see here we got sample text, which is, you know, it's pulled from our sample table. So that makes sense. Um, so one of the other one of the other ways to kind of test and see that your program is working the way that you're expecting it to, I use a program called SQLite Studio. And SQLite Studio, it's a free and open source tool. Uh, also for you know working with your database, your SQLite database, managing it, creating tables, whatnot. And it also allows you to view your data like in a tabular format. So that's pretty handy. Um, so I like to use it just to make sure that everything is working the way that I was expecting it to. So I'll go ahead and open it here, hopefully. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so open up that program. And then, so this is like, I just downloaded this, so it's blank. So you would go to add a database, and then you want to choose a file, because we already have our database existing. So we're going to go to our project name, SQLite Sample Database, and then in the bin, debug, net core apps, and here we have it, our database. Um, it's a database file, so .db. So we can open this. And then if you double click here and then double click on the sample table, you'll see that there is var, char, and int in our two columns, which is what we, we had specified in our code. And then if you go over to data, you do see that there's sample text and then that second column is one. So that integer value that we had entered, we had entered right here, sample text and one. So this program did work exactly how we were expecting it to. Obviously, there's a lot of different commands that you can work with in SQLite, um, but that would be more of an SQLite question. This was just getting it you know, linked up with your c -sharp program. So it's not very difficult, a uh, little tricky syntax, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not too difficult. So I hope you like this video. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and don't be afraid to leave questions in the comments. I'm usually pretty good at getting back at those. So thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.